wasn't sure where else to post these stories, so I figured I'd share them here. I've been a search and rescue officer for a few years now, and along the way I've seen a few things that I think you guys would be interested in. I have a pretty good track record for finding missing people. Most of the time they just wander off the path or step down a small cliff and they can't find their way back. The majority of them have heard the old stay where you are thing and they don't wander off far. But I have had two cases where that didn't happen. Both bother me a lot and I use them as motivation to search even harder on the missing person cases I get called on. The first was a little boy who was out berry picking with his parents. He and his sister were together. Both of them went missing around the same time. My parents lost sight of them for a few seconds, and in that time, both the kids apparently wandered off. When their parents couldn't find them, they called us, and we came out to search the area. We found the daughter pretty quickly, and when we asked where her brother was, she told us he'd been taken away by the bear man. She said he gave her berries and told her to stay quiet, that he wanted to play with her brother for a while. The last time she saw her brother, he was riding the shoulders of this bear man and seemed calm. Of course, her first thought was abduction, but we never found a trace of another human being in that area. The little girl was also insistent that he wasn't a normal guy, but that he was tall and covered in hair, like a bear, and that he had a weird face. We searched that area for weeks. It was one of the longest calls I've ever been on, but we never found a single trace of that kid. The other was a young woman who was out hiking with her mom and grandpa. According to the mother, her daughter had climbed up the tree to get a better view of the forest. She'd never come back down. They waited at the base of the tree for hours, calling her name before they called for help. Again, we searched everywhere. We never found a trace of her. I have no idea where she could possibly have gone. Because neither her mother or grandpa saw her come down. A few times I've been out on my own searching with a canine, and they've tried leading me straight up cliffs, not hills, not even rock faces. Straight, sheer cliffs, with no possible handles. It's always baffling, and in those cases we usually find the person on the other side of the cliff miles away from where the canine has led us. I'm sure this is an explanation, but it's sort of strange. One particularly sad case involved the recovery of a body. A nine-year-old girl fell down an embankment and got impaled a dead tree at the base. It was a complete freak accident. But I'll never forget the sound her mother made when we told her what happened. She saw the body bag being loaded into the ambulance. She let out the most haunting, heartbroken wail I've ever heard. It was like her whole life was crashing down around her, and a part of her had died with her daughter. I've heard from another SAR officer that she had killed herself a few weeks after. She couldn't live with the loss of her daughter. Another story.
I was teamed up with another SAR officer because we received reports of bears at the area. We were looking for a guy who hadn't come down from a climbing trip when he was supposed to, and we ended up having to do some serious climbing to get where he was figured to be. We found him trapped in a small crevice with a broken leg. It was not pleasant. He had been there for almost two days, and his leg was obviously infected. We were able to get him into a chopper, and I heard from one of the EMTs that the guy was absolutely inconsolable. He kept talking about how he had been doing fine, and he'd gotten to the top. A man had been there. He said the guy had no climbing equipment, and he was wearing a parka and ski pants. He walked up to the guy. And when the guy turned around, he said he had no face. It was just blank. He freaked out and ended up trying to get off the mountain too fast, which is why he had fallen. He said he could hear the guy all night, climbing down the mountain and letting out these horrible muffled screams. That story bothered the hell out of me. I'm glad I wasn't there to hear it. One of the scariest things I've ever happened to me involved the search of a young woman who had gotten separated from our hiking group. We were out until late at night because the dogs had picked up her scent. When we found her, she was curled up under a large rotted tree log. She was missing her shoes and pack. She was clearly in shock. She didn't have any injuries, and we were able to get her to walk with us back to base ops. Along the way, she kept looking behind us and asking why that big man with black eyes was following us. We couldn't see anyone, so we just wrote it off as some weird symptom of shock. But the closer we got to base, the more agitated this woman got. She kept asking me to tell him to stop making faces at her. At one time, she stopped and turned around and started yelling into the forest, saying she wanted to leave him alone. She wasn't going to go with him, she said, and she wouldn't give us to him. We finally got her to keep moving, but we started hearing these weird noises coming from all around us. It was like coughing, but more rhythmic and deeper. It was almost insect-like. I really don't know how else to describe it. When we were within sight of base ops. The woman turns to me. Her eyes are about as wide as I can imagine no human could open them. She touches my shoulder and says, "He says to tell you to speed up. He doesn't like looking at the scar on your neck. I have a very small scar on the base of my neck, but it's mostly hidden under my collar." And I have no idea how this woman saw it. Right after she says it, I heard that weird coughing right in my ear, and I just about jumped out of my skin. I also alerted the ops, trying not to show how freaked out I was. But I have to say, I was really happy when he left the area that night. This is the last one I'll tell, and it's probably the weirdest story I have. Now I don't know if this is true in every SAR unit. It's sort of an unspoken, regular thing we run into. You can try asking about it with other SAR officers. 
But even if they know what you're talking about, they probably won't say anything about it. We've been told not to talk about it by our superiors. And at this point, we've all gotten so used to it that it doesn't even seem weird anymore. On just about every case, where we're really far into the wilderness, I'm talking 30 or 40 miles, at some point, we'll find a staircase in the middle of the woods. It's almost like if you took the stairs in your home, cut them out, and put them in the forest. I asked about it the first time I saw some, and the other officer just told me not to worry about it, that it was just normal. Everyone I asked said the same thing. I wanted to check them out, but I was told very emphatically that I should never go anywhere near them. I just sort of ignore them now, when I run into them, because it happens so frequently. I have a lot more stories, and I suppose if anyone's interested, I'll tell some of them tomorrow. If anyone has any theories about the stairs, or you've seen them too, let me know.